capable of, of capturing the um, the color disproportion. If they're able to ca capture, you know, the disproportion between red, green, and blue values. And so, you know, to us, it doesn't appear white. It appears like a nice cream color. And when you look outdoors on a bright sunny day, um, you know, and you have the blue skies visible, you'll find that indoors still looks okay. We can still see the cream colors. And that's because when you look, because our eyes are capable of seeing that larger range, we can look outdoors, we can see the the disproportion, the color disproportion of the blue sky, things still appear blue. And the indoors, you know, we can we can still sense the color disproportion because we have a larger bottom end, you know, things don't crush to black so quickly for us, so we can still see that. But there's one more thing that our eyes can do that the camera cannot. You probably notice that whenever you're, you're you know, uh, at night time, you know, if you're, if you're in a car or you're walking down the, the street at night, um, you'll find that if you ever look up and see a street light or a car passes by and a headlamp see you, you know, you kind of get blinded momentarily. And soon afterwards, there's, a, there's this kind of weird spot in your eye. It's, it's this dark spot. And the same thing happens in, on daylight indoor situations like this. You know, it's like if I looked at, you know, like a, a big, bright, shiny mirror, you know, one of these, you know, a, a, sh a shiny mirror like this. Let's see, I wonder if I can get it. No, okay, we're not in the right position. But sometimes, you know, there are times, ooh, Oh, you know, it's like where I leave the the mirror on the floor, right? Ah, and I get I, I catch you know a reflection in my in my face like this, right? And the thing is that after I get shone in the face like this, there's this terrible black spot, this dark spot sitting down in the, in, in the corner of my eye. Okay, so when you get momentarily blinded, there's this dark image, you know, this temporary image of this thing that just blinded you. You know, you get a temporary image of the car headlights. If you stare at those blinds and you suddenly shut your eyes, you get an after image of those blinds. What that after image is, is that your eyes, in addition to being, you see, if you look at this camera, right, this camera changes the whole picture. It re-exposes, it changes the exposure over the entire image. But your eyes, on the other hand, are capable of changing the exposure, not only over the entire image with the iris that, you know, uh, the diaphragm in your eye that opens and closes, but it also is capable of adjusting the exposure for specific regions that overexpose. Wherever, you know, whenever you're looking outdoors, you know, you're, you're standing indoors, you look outside your window, you see the blue sky, what happens is your eyes are going to take those blue windows, you know, it's going to take the, the, the over bright portal of that blue window, and it's going to only adjust the exposure for that small region only for the areas that overexpose. So when you look, w when you suddenly look away and you look at the wall indoors, you get that that temporary ghost image of what's going on outdoors. And what's happened is your eyes have adjusted the gamut. They're now underexposing. They're, 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 they're underexposing in that precise image, you know, the, pic the picture of the window when you look inside. So every time you see a spot, you know, from, from, from you know, getting blinded, you know, that, that, image that you see, that spot, that is an area of your eyes that has adjusted. It's, it's adjusted so that it's capable of looking at something bright and without losing the details and without losing the, the color disproportions. So that is the concept of exposure and it's something that we have to deal with is that whenever we're, when we're artists, you know, we may be able to perceive a blue, we may be able to perceive, you know, these color disproportions, but there's the most important thing is the relative brightness. Um, it's, it's, you know, getting the, the relative brightness of the light rather than, you know, the dispro color disproportion. So if you want to symbol, if you want to be able to show in your image that something is receiving a lot of light in comparison to all these dark regions, you know, if you, if you want to say that these areas here are getting a lot of light, these areas not getting a lot, you know, these get n areas not getting as much light, then you have to work with your limited gamut. You have to blow these out to white. The red, green, and blue channels are maxing out. You can't see the, the color disproportion anymore. The details, gone. There's no details, right? They, they, they just get lost because the gamut is not capable of doing it. So if you're working with paint, you use white paint, throw the detail out, you know, just get rid of it because it can't be seen with, you know, the limited gamut. And when you're working with digital, take the channels, roof them. Roof them to, to, to 255, 255, 255. That's, you know, it's out of our range. We can't do anything about it. Just let it go. And the nice thing about doing that, right, is that whenever you roof the colors, Okay, you roof the, the colors, and all the details go disappear. You know what happens? You get this giant patch of white, this big graphic shape. You know, it's it's that's why Frank Miller's stuff looks so good. You know, S Sin City. You know, they go for the the giant white, you know, giant black shape. You get this in a way is a silhouette as well. This big white shape. 
this thing is forming a silhouette of white. You know, areas that are crushed to black, that's a silhouette of black. It's a, it's a silhouette of no light. So, you know, when you're working with exposures, you have to deal with, you know, you, you, you let, the, let the detail go. When you let the detail go, then the shapes begin to merge together to, f to form larger, more interesting graphic shapes. Um, looks better, uh, less confusing. You know, sometimes too much detail is confusing. So this is how we work with exposure. So let me turn that mirror over because that keeps blinding me. And we'll get into the digital, back to the digital realm of things. Um, okay, so I said I, ma I made a, a, a color palette program um, for this. This is this palette up here. This is the conventional color picker. Um, that 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 I, I you know that that comes with the software that comes with TV Paint. This is um, a, a palette plugin that I've written using a TV Paint SDK, and it only works with TV Paint. So it's it's not something that you know you can use with Photoshop. You're if you if you work with if you use Photoshop, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go and program one yourself. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, you might ask, you know, why would I make you know a separate color palette tool when you have this wonderful you know color palette uh, tool right here, and it's because these color palettes have their own limitations. Um, take for instance, uh, w when you look at red, green, and blue, okay, um, the colors of red, green, and blue. Okay, let me just choose like a full-on red. All right, and if I make uh, a green, okay, yeah, full-on green. So. If we look at this color here. I've got red is 255, green is zero, blue is zero. And over here on this green, ugh, let me take my brush down. Okay, this green here is also zero two fifty five zero. Numerically, you know, they're both the same intensity. They're both the red and the green. They're the same brightness. You know, they're both two fifty five bright. But for some odd reason, doesn't that green look brighter to you? Doesn't it kind of pop out more to you? What happens if I take this blue? Let's let's make a blue. I'm going to use a another giant brush put it together. Again, the blue is set, you know, uh, there it is. Blue is set to 255. Okay, if you look at the luminance, luminance is 128. If I grab that color. See, the luminance is still 128. Grab the red. You know, luminance is still 128. Numerically, all these three colors are the same, and yet, when you look at them, they're all of different intensities. One's brighter than the other. Green is the brightest, red is kind of second brightest, blue is eh, not really that bright at all. And the thing about our eyes is that we are, for some reason or other, better at sensing green than we are at sensing red or at sensing blue. Now, it's kind of an odd thing, you know, it's it's maybe it's because we live in a green planet and, and plant life is mostly what we see, so we are our eyes are more sensitive to green. You'll find that these colors, you know, red, green, and blue, they're all spectral uh, wavelengths. They're all spe spectral colors on the wave, you know, on, on the on the electromagnetic spectrum. And I know there are some colors that we can't really see, like ultraviolet and infrared. And then you go into radio waves and microwaves, and those are some things that we can't see at all. But um, in this case, you know, our eyes are spe are sensitized to specific wavelengths. I guess green is probably the one that's most predominant on Earth, and that's why we see it better. But this causes us some interesting problems when we try to paint digitally. Because when you look at this um, this, this color palette, you know, um, like the conventional color palette, you'll find that there, there are two ways, well, there are a number of, of ways of looking at color. You can look at it in the, in the sense of um, having RGB, you've got red, green, blue, and then there's HSL, which is hue, saturation, luminance, or hue, saturation, value. And hue is basically just where on the rainbow you've got, you know, you've, you've got this this uh, circle. You have this, this circle down here, which is, you know, the rainbow circle. You've got saturation. And saturation, that is really just the, um, that's the color disproportion. That's the, the color disproportion. Um, so if the, if the co color disproportion is set to zero, you'll get a gray, you know, or you'll get a white, or you'll get a black. You'll get a gray scale when the color disproportion is set to zero. It's how different, you know, the colors are. And if you look at the RGB here, let me... Um, crank that up. If you look at RGB, see, if when the saturation is zero, the color disproportion, there's none, right? They're all the same. As I crank this up, see what happens to these sliders? They all start to, to, to weave away from one another. And so when you start adjusting the hue, it's simply adjusting the proportions of red, green, and blue to one another. So that's the color disproportion. Now, 
back to the, the, the problem of the red, green, blue thing, you know, red being brighter than, than the other colors, uh, I mean, green being brighter than, than, than red and red being brighter than blue.